welcome to episode 117 of the BerlinBrigade.com podcast. Welcome. I'm David Guerra, former member of Alpha Company, 6th Battalion, 502nd Infantry, Berlin Brigade, United States Army, and I am your host for this episode and all the episodes of the BerlinBrigade.com podcast. And again, I welcome you. Let's get this show started. Einsteigen, bitte. All right, well, happy Lunar New Year, everyone. This I'm recording this on Friday, the 12th of February, and it is uh, the Lunar New Year. And uh, welcome. Welcome to the Year of the Ox. And I do hope your year is off to a great start. Uh, remember, slow and steady, strong, that's the ox. So, uh, you know, it's not going to run any races. It's not the year of the hare or the rabbit. No, it's the year of the ox. And if you're going to go big, go big, because it's it's an ox. So uh, let's make sure we do the best we can, right? Alrighty, also, next on tap, I got a question for everybody. Have you received your vaccine? Have you registered? Have you been able to register? That's the big thing. Can you, have you, and will you? So I know I've registered. I'm waiting for them to give me my call, my uh, my time, and then I'm off and running. And uh, if you haven't, do so as soon as you can because they say the vaccines are coming. And uh, and if you have, if you've already if you've already received your first one, make certain you get your second dose. And uh, without a doubt, make sure that happens. All right, let's take care of some administrative stuff before we dive into the guts of this episode. The website's up and running, registries up to date, galleries up to date. What else is up to date? Well, that's pretty much it. Uh, podcast, again, as I said, I'm recording this one. So as soon as this one goes up, everything will be live and will be up to date. So uh, again, if you are interested in being a guest, being interviewed, by all means, reach out. Do not hesitate. Uh, drop me a note and let's get the ball rolling. Also, our Facebook live streams have resumed. I know I wanted to move it over to YouTube, but we're getting a little bit more results out of the uh, Facebook. So more more individuals uh, joining us and conversating and all that. And that's a fun time on a Saturday morning. And the next episode will be Saturday, February 27, 2021 at 11 a.m. Eastern Time, United States Eastern. Uh, that's 10 a.m. Central and 9 a.m. Mountain and 8 a.m. Pacific Time. So that's the next live stream. And uh, I, I will be posting reminders between now and then on our Facebook, on our Twitter and on the Instagram pages. So if you follow us there and speaking of follow us, following us there, I do invite you to visit, share and, of course, subscribe to our various social media channels on Instagram. I look for Berlin Brigade, all one word on Facebook. That's at Facebook.com slash Berlin Brigade. Again, all one word and on Twitter at Berlin Brigade. So check it out check it out so that's uh, that's the administrative stuff and now let's get on with this episode's topic crossing over to the soviet sector a berlin brigade soldier's perspective hey everybody <clears throat> dave gear here again and let's continue with the cold war perspective from a berlin brigade soldier and this time i'm going to talk about the soviet sector and crossing into the soviet sector all right so as members of the Army of Occupation of Berlin in for the United States, we were able to cross into the other sectors. The Americans, we could go into the British sector, we could go to the French sector with no issue, no problem, no notification. However, because of the political climate at the time, yeah, we had to check in at Checkpoint Charlie. There it is. I didn't mention it last episode because it was going to be part of this episode. So Checkpoint Charlie, the third checkpoint. Remember, we had... Checkpoint Alpha in Helmstead, uh, Germany, West Germany at the time. And we had the corridor take all the way to Checkpoint Bravo in Dry Linden. And there we go. Now Checkpoint Charlie allows us to cross into uh, East Berlin, the Soviet sector, actually, at the time. Now, yes, we could go. We could go. However, we had to basically ask for permission because we'd be taking time off or we would be uh, definitely, or if it was on a weekend, we could go, however, we had to fill out an East Pass. It was the East Pass that kind of we had to check in with the MPs at Checkpoint Charlie. Let them know, so they let marked us that we were there. They knew we went in, what time we went in, and we had to be back before midnight. So if you went early in the morning, you were going to go over there and party and hang out, you definitely had to be back before. Now, if you were walking over, well, you know, it was going to be a quite a quite a haul. 
and we could not ride in the taxis. No, we could not ride with the civilians. Nope. We could only ride in uh, those uh, other American uh, U.S. forces that had privately owned vehicles in Berlin. And yes, we could bring them to Berlin if we had them. But uh, at that time, I was just a kid. No, I didn't have one yet. It wasn't. And I didn't need it because the um, the the mass transit system of Berlin and folks, if you've never been to Berlin and, and you go back, don't even worry about renting a car. You don't want to deal with all that traffic because we'll forget Berlin is a major metropolitan city. Uh, it's going to have traffic issues no matter where you go. The rapid transit system, the mass transit system. Oh, bye. My, my, ah, was fantastic. Never had a need for it. And let's just say if you lived out in the economy and the economy was the off base housing, the civilians left lived among the civilians. Um, all you really truly needed is just one of those carts, basket carts that had the wheels on it. And you can just pull it with you and pull it onto the bus, pull it onto the subway and off you went and you were able to take it with you to go home. So you really did need to worry about a vehicle. I, I never saw a need for it, except for walking into East Berlin. Because again, we were not supposed to ride the mass transit. We were not supposed to ride, take, take taxis. And I say, we're supposed to. Okay. So um, it's just one of those things that, uh, you know, it, it was just part of being there. Uh, we were there as, as the Army of Occupation. And we dealt with only the Soviets. So when we crossed in, we still had to check in at the Soviet side or the East Berlin side. We had to check in, but there were some East Germans there and they they'd always try to pull a fast one. But no, we could only deal with the Soviets, the Soviet forces. If we were ever detained, we had to ask for the Soviets. We had to, well, we would need to ask for the Americans first and then the Soviets. And at that time, we didn't recognize the armed forces of East Germany in Berlin because that was still an occupied city by the Soviets. And again, in, in West Berlin, there were no West German forces. There was the police, the Polizei, but that's who we did recognize because again, they had that civil authority and it was granted to them. But in East Berlin, the Soviet, the East German forces, the armed forces, no, we didn't recognize them. So it was only the Soviets we dealt with. Now, as I mentioned in the past two episodes, the East Berlin was the mecca, was the showcase, was the, was the, well, it was just the it place for um, all things communist and, and the mecca and, and the utopian society that, that, uh, that communism was supposed to bring. <laughs> and folks, you have not seen breadlines until you've seen bread lines and bread lines for nothing because there would be lines there at a bakery and there'd be nothing in there. There'd be nothing in the racks. There'd be, there might be something baking, but there would be nothing in the rack. Yet. There was lines down the street for food, for, for bread, stuff like that. And if you've never seen that, you don't, you'll never going to understand the humanity and, and the feeling that you get just seeing that and, and, and understanding that these people are staying in line for just a loaf of bread. You know, we, we got it pretty good in the States and in, in the West, even in the 80s, we had it good. But it, this this place, this place in time, it's kind of like it just stopped. And it was one of those things you never expected to see. And when you see it, wow. Speaking of other things that you don't expect to see, but you do see. And now, well, now it's just commonplace. We see it all the time. We see it everywhere. Heck, even in the front door of my house, I have one. Cameras cameras there were cameras just about every building at every corner of every building at the top looking down following people static cameras that were just watching people coming and going and it's one of those things you never you didn't get used to it you did not get used to it now it's just part of the background wherever we are doesn't matter wherever we are now we see it in movies it's kind of like the go-to now in motion pictures or those those you know they're looking for a terrorist and and it's a go-to in motion pictures, it's understood. Like I said, I have I have a couple of cameras here at my house, and next door neighbor has a couple, and everybody I know has a ring camera on their door, the doorbell. So it, it's one of those that has just become commonplace. But back then, in the Soviet sector, it was wow. You know, you were shocked the first time you saw these big honking cameras just looking down at you, and in some cases, they did follow you. Uh, what else? However, the, the the other thing was that even though they were quiet, they were more subdued, they kept to themselves, they were still very, very good 
people. You could see the good in them. And they would help you as much as they could, but they could not overtly help you. Um, and we're talking about the East, East Berliners, the citizens of East Berlin. Uh, you went to a restaurant that went all out to, to explain something on the menu you didn't understand. They went all out to kind of guide you on what to order and, and in some cases. But, you know, again, because it was such a, um, a um, what's that called? A surveillance society. The Stasi, the, the, the state security for internal security, the Stasi, uh, you know, it's basically it's like half the uh, half the population. They got so involved with with the population and spying on each other that at some point half the population was a Stasi informant and the other half was waiting to be a Stasi informant. And it, it was I'm not I mean, obviously, the numbers might be different, but what we saw and what we knew and what we heard is, you know, you couldn't even talk to somebody or somebody wanted to ask you if you had change for a 10 mark bill. You had two, a couple of one mark pieces, the German, the East German money, and you could not exchange, give them change or exchange a, a bill for coins because it would look like they were paying you off. And they would do that. They'd do that propaganda, right? That deception, the disinformation. And they would do that. They would find people to kind of put in, in precarious situations just to make the Americans look bad or the British look bad or the French. And sometimes it happened. Sometimes, you know, it didn't. And a lot of times you just, you, you were told, you were told, expect this and keep to yourself. Don't answer them. Don't look at them. Don't say anything to them. Just, especially if they're asking for things like that and outside, because those cameras would pick up on it. It could be a setup and <clears throat> it probably was. All right. So with all of that being said, um, again, East Berlin was that was that showcase, that showpiece of, of communism. And this is what our society would be like. And and yeah, they had all the, the Stalin era design uh, apartment buildings that those stand out anywhere in the world. If you look at, at images now, you'll still see them and what they look like. And of course, the the, the older buildings that survived World War II. Obviously, they were refurbished in some cases. The Rotes Rathaus, the Dom Cathedral in East Berlin. Oh man, that was that was awesome. But um, when I was first there in in the mid '80s, it um, I went. We were there at the Dom Cathedral, and you could go only in one little side chapel, but to see the main grand hall, the main grand uh, mass area, um, the what was it called? The oh, the Navery. I want to say that's what it was called. With it. Then the choir and where all the, 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 the seating is. You could only see through a little glass window on a door. And it was dark and it was burned out and it was just it was you could tell it had been destroyed during during World War Two. And uh, so I went back, went back for the twentieth anniversary of the fall of the Berlin Wall and got to go to the uh, to the um, Dom Cathedral again. It's open. It's redone. It's awesome. It looks fantastic. Uh, my in-laws went because uh, my in-law, father-in-law was based there in Berlin at the time I was there. And um, so he went also. They, him and his wife, my mother-in-law, they went inside. They got to see it. And oh, uh, the photos they took and, and the images they brought back. Fantastic stuff. Fantastic stuff. And so, again, time does change things. Time does make progress. But again, at that time, you know, it's kind of things were just stand still because there were other things that were, quote unquote, more important than refurbishing an old cathedral. In this case, you know, keeping an eye on the Americans, keeping an eye on the Brits, keeping an eye on the French and keeping an eye on the people. And, uh, you know, now it's well, we look at it and it's like, oh, well, no, that can't happen. And well, I'll leave it right there. Um, what else? I can see. Okay, so we definitely did some dining there. We did some did some shopping. I mentioned that at the Centrum, great stuff there. Uh, dining, multiple restaurants. Um, what else did I get to do? Really great food. It, some great experiences with some um, East German, Soviet-based food. Um, first time, great stuff. Um, what else? Ah, the Stolichnaya. I mentioned that earl also already in a past episode, and. Yeah, we drank, we drank. But again, we were young. What do we know, right? Yeah, let's see. Oh, yes, yes, the shops, the little shops. I went into a shop and I picked up a couple of, um, I'm a big watch, what's it, H-O, horology, horology, a horologist. I'm a big watch fan. I'm a big watch collector. And 
I love watches. I love timepieces, classic timepieces, current times, automatic movement. And back then I picked up a uh, Rula, R-U-H-L-A, Rula alarm clock. You, know, the, the, you wind it up in the back and it's got the two bells on top and it fires off. I had that for the longest time. That thing was awesome. It was fantastic. And I guess in one move, we moved after I got out of the military. It um, fell, it broke, or something caused it to break, or it got packed wrong, but uh, it stopped. But the spring just stopped winding, so it, it, that took care of that. And I probably could have gotten it fixed, but I I know I have the, the the thing someplace, and more likely the insides are all busted and rusted, but we'll, we'll find it. Anyway, moving on. I also picked up a pocket watch, an East German uh, Rula pocket watch. To this day, folks, it still works. There's a crack in, in the crystal, but other than that, um, it still works. I wind it up. It doesn't last very long. The winding doesn't last very long, and I've kept it unwound for so long, but it still has tension. It does wind, and I want to say it's got maybe about a two to three hour wind. Once you wind it, off it goes. And um, But it, it's the craftsmanship. You could tell they put in the work. They did the work. And uh, speaking of, there we go. I don't know if you can hear it. And yeah, I still put it out. I still, I have a, there's a photo of it on our, uh, on our Instagram page, uh, berlinbrigade.com on the uh, Berlin, Instagram.com slash Berlin Brigade. So that's still there. And um, what else? Uh, and then she was my girlfriend. Now she's my wife. Uh, she picked up a China pattern. Or China, China set, a set of plates, China plates. Um, uh, East, East, German, East German, I think it was East German China. And we still have that full set, full set packed away. And uh, it's, it's, it's nice to bring out. We bring it out on just those special occasions like holidays. And, but it's still nice. It's all intact. It's a great piece of history. You look underneath it and you still see the stamp there. And it's like, this is a place that doesn't exist anymore. Uh, but again, purchased there in East Berlin. What else? Um, the blankets, the wool blankets. Oh, I mean, obviously it got cold there. So, and you know, the, the, there was known to be blackouts and things like that prior to us being there. Uh, I don't recall how, how well the, the services were when we were there in East Berlin, but I know every time we went, there was service, but, um, so, you know, you may, you know, you, the, the blankets and the cloth and all of that material, you know, it's, it's made to last, it's made to, to work. What else did I, I got, like I said, I mentioned, I'd gotten some camping equipment. I got a nice stool that I still use to this day. It's, it's, it's packed away cause it still works. Uh, one of those folding, you fold it together and you just see like a rectangle of metal wire, but you open it up and there's that cushion, that seat, that fabric that's there. I had a backpack that I used for the longest time. It finally, it just, it wore out it could just from use, not from anything else. So again, great quality, great product, great people. It was just the, the times that uh, forced us to be there and forced that division, but uh, the politics and, and, and all of that. But for the most part, it was a lot of fun being able to go into East Berlin. And now after the wall fell, going back and into East Berlin, um, it's a different climate. It's a different climate. Yeah, the city's more active. There's more lights. It's a little bit brighter, a little more festive than what I remember. But there's one thing I do carry over from all of this is every photograph I have from every time I went to East Berlin, the sky is always gray. Interesting. Interesting. So something to think about. Anyway, well, listen, my dog just barked at me. I think he's hungry. I'm a little hungry, too. And um, so I'm going to start wrapping this up again. Folks, if you find yourselves in East Berlin, um, just dive right in. Find some of the ones, some of the locations that have been around a while. And you kind of get a feel for the for the old way of how in the old way being, you know, last uh, last year of the last year of um the last few years of the wall. There we go. <laughs> Golly, it took a little bit. So anyway, well, listen, let me let you go. Um, thank you for joining me on this journey. There's more, there's more, there's more coming. And uh, so again, let's, let's bring this one to a close. Thank you. Well, what did you think of that? Well, interesting times. And again, um, wow. But, um, you know, it's one of those, it's my perspective, it's what I saw, it's what I experienced, and I know experience uh, varies from individual to individual, so again, let me know, join me, uh, share your impressions of everything we've talked about, and 
we'll go forward with that. But uh, I would definitely want to hear you. I want to hear from you. Uh, uh, not taken away from our previous guests. They've all been awesome. And again, you can hear all the previous episodes on our website, BerlinBrigade.com. And you've got, I mean, the, the gamut of individuals from when it first all went down to uh, down near the end and in between and everyone in between and different individuals. And I want to thank everyone who ever was a guest on the show. Most greatly appreciated. And I thank you for being with us. And of course, there are those that uh, will have passed, have moved on, they've passed on. They are no longer with us since recording them. And I want to thank them for, well, posthumously for for sharing their words. And now their words are going to live on. And that's a good thing. So their memory's not forgotten. And again, who can bear to be forgotten? So with that being said, don't hesitate. If you're interested in being a guest on the BerlinBrigade.com podcast, I ask you to just drop me an email and we'll get the logistics all sorted out and get you on the show. Um, well, like I said, it's time to wrap up the activities here on the episode 117 of the BerlinBrigade.com podcast. And again, speaking of the activities here at the BerlinBrigade.com website, I want to thank you because... All activities are supported through the generous donations of listeners like you, everyone who listens, uh, everyone who, you know, just passing the word, sharing, liking, telling others, hey, check this out. And that's support right there. Uh, those that give us reviews on on um, on in, on the uh, Apple podcast website, I want to thank you. And folks, don't be afraid. Do a review. Do a like. Tell And if you don't like it, tell us. How are we going to get better if you don't tell us you don't like it? And if you do like it, tell us. Let us know we're on the right track. Let us know that the podcast is on the right track. It's new now taking these new turns, and we're trying out new things. And upcoming episodes, definitely going to be new. Stuff we haven't done before. So, uh, again, um, thank you. And, again, as I mentioned about those that, that donate, uh, the donations, those that donate, thank you very much. It certainly helps when it comes time to pay the bills here for to keep the website up and running. And uh, I know times are tough, but, hey, they're tough here, too. But I'm doing everything I can to keep the website up and running. So I want to thank you for those of you that have helped. And everyone else, please consider donating through the PayPal button at the bottom of the BerlinBrigade.com homepage and at the bottom of the BerlinBrigade.com slash contact page. And so, again, thank you. And one last uh, thing, again, I share it with everybody. Please visit the registry. Check with your registry information. Bring it up to date. If you did, a, your email is changed or something is missing let us know drop fill in the form and we'll get it updated and uh, so again i want to thank you i want to thank again everyone for listening i am david guerra former member of uh, alpha company 6th battalion 502nd infantry berlin brigade and i want to thank you for listening and happy lunar new year uh danke schön auf wiedersehen tschüss Endstation. Bitte alle aussteigen.